I have a love hate relationship with social media for sure. I have a love hate relationship, <coughs> so I can only imagine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Stay, stay on your side of the, <laughs> of the spectrum of social media, and you'll be just fine. Cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't don't cross over. I don't think I could I could make money with an OnlyFans account, so I think I'm forced. You to never say, know. No. You never know. Nah, I just you know, uh, you certain know. things. I'm just saying. You know, there's there's <laughs> advantages women have. You know, you guys are just more beautiful than us. It is what it is. Well, you know? more, I mean, more attractive. The thing about OnlyFans is that if you're a woman, you're obviously your target audience is men. Of if course. you're a man with an only uh, with an OnlyFans, your, your target, target audience, audience is women or, is, or is gay men. men or gay men. It's yeah. men, a hundred percent, because women do not pay to subscribe to OnlyFans exactly. pages. Exactly. So if you can target the gay guys, I mean, go for it. I guess you're so. in. And there's a lot less male creators than there are females. So you that is true. I didn't think about that. There's two yeah. million creators on OnlyFans. That's a lot. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Would you think? I, but I would think the market share is still small, right? Like that's not two million out of compared to what. You know what I mean? Yeah, is but that big or small? <clears throat> well, let's just say OnlyFans in comparison to people who do mainstream porn or something. Like, I'm not sure if all mainstream porn stars have OnlyFans, but they probably do at this point. But it's there's there's a lot of porn stars that have OnlyFans, but there's not a lot. I wouldn't say there's as many OnlyFans that are porn stars. You know Correct. what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, it doesn't. It's not like exclusive. Yeah, but then also it's like now you meet a girl and. You know, five out of ten women you meet have an OnlyFans or have had an OnlyFans during some COVID. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just crazy. And I've noticed that, too, like, <clears throat> when I meet people before, let's say four years ago, if I would tell someone I had an OnlyFans, they were like, no, I'm not dating a girl on OnlyFans. Now it's like, all right, well, what do you do on it? <laughs> now, now, it's funny. I was about now to. Now it's like, all right, have what? to adjust. Are you selling feet pics? Yeah, you know, they're like, like but how how far? How do far you do you take it? Mm -hmm. Are you like yes. just kind of like in a thong by by the pool, right. or are you like fucking a guy on there? Exactly. You know? yeah, it's yeah, yeah, always yeah, yeah. that by yourself. Okay, cool. With a guy, fuck no. <laughs> Every time. So it's funny to see that because at, at first it was like it's, she's on OnlyFans, she's a hoe, she has a high body count. Now it's like, yeah. all right, are you fucking on it? We're cool. Then. We're good. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll deal with it. Is it is it kind of like not that serious? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess exactly. I feel you. I mean, I have mixed feelings about. I think I feel more strongly about porn than I do about OnlyFans. OnlyFans is a little different because it's not. Even though we associate it with like exotic content, it that's not what it always is. Right. Right. But porn obviously is like rated X content. So mm -hmm. for men, I can't speak for women, but for when for men, porn watching porn is not really all that healthy. Yeah. Um, it can cause a lot of yep. like mental issues for mm -hmm. real. Um I can tell you that when I stopped watching porn, like I, I immediately saw women differently. Yeah. Like I gave it a few months and then the what I the way I treated women, the way I interacted it with women. It affects the way you have sex and everything. Whoa, pff, bro. You have <clears throat> like seriously. Mm -hmm. Seriously for I don't real. think that like, I know a lot of kids watch porn because they're on Google they're or whatever. They're kids. No, I mean... But, and like, if you're the learning internet how is to... easily accessible. If you you're know? learning how to have sex from porn, like, there's a problem. Yeah, yeah. You're going to fucking lose your virginity and, like, choke and slap some bitch. <laughs> and she's going to be like, what the fuck's going what on? What is this? Yeah. What is going on? And then the girl's like, oh, this is it. Damn. Like, what the I, fuck? I wasn't looking forward to getting beat up. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have a black eye, you know? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All righty, guys. We're going to take a quick break to hear from our first sponsor. We'll be right back. All righty, guys. Taking a quick break from the podcast to bring you a word from our sponsor, Christian J. DePaz. Appreciate him for coming through. He offers a phenomenal service. Guys, you know I'm a big promoter of entrepreneurship, owning a company, starting a business, doing your own thing, and chasing your own dreams. But as the old saying goes, takes money to make money. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Christian J. Deposit, what he does. He gets funding for new and startup businesses. Christian, tell us a little bit about it. Thank you so much, bro, course, bro. for you know the opportunity to come inside your podcast and help more entrepreneurs start their own business or scale their current businesses. So what we do here at Secure Funding is that we'll help you acquire anywhere between fifty to $150,000 at 0% interest rate business credit so that you can, once again, start or scale your current business. So if you come here from our good friend Nelson, there's not a lot you're coming from, then we'll head at the podcast and we'll take extra good care of you. With that being said, brother, thank you so much for bringing us on. Of course, of course. What are you waiting for, guys? Click the link in the bio. So, 
question. Do people assume because of the tattoos and stuff, like, because we just made the whole joke about getting beat up when you're having sex. <laughs> is that, like, a common thing where people assume, like, goth chicks and, like, BDSM and all that shit? Is that, like, is or is that just, like, a total assumption stereotype thing? Um, I've never experienced it personally where people, you know, what I have heard is, like, oh, you must like pain. I'm like, no. It's one, an assumption, like, I guess. No, I don't. <laughs> no one likes to be in pain unless you have like a problem. I mentally. think that's all like trauma. But that's yeah, all, like, like weird. Yeah, it's it's just that like, oh wow, yeah. you have a lot of tattoos. You must like pain. Like no, bro. I just like having tattoos. Like the pain is temporary. The tattoo is forever. So I deal with it. But mm. yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've heard. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, I'm not. I don't want yeah. you to burn me. I don't want you to put fucking hot ass. Wax, kind of wax on, on me. me like no i'm good i'm good tie me up mm -hmm. you know no, yeah, i get you that's and then obviously now that you have like 50 shades of gray and those kinds of movies and shit it's been popularized so i don't know mm -hmm. i find it kind of wild that some people are into that kind of shit i don't know like it's, it is what it is whatever you're into is what you're into but like to make the assumption that know. because someone has tattoos they automatically like being in pain is like it's dumb well You've been married for the same person for 15 years and you hate her. So you yeah. must like pain too. Exactly. <laughs> you like emotional pain. Like you like to yeah. suffer in yeah, silence. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. you know, no, I got you. it's the same thing. You know, what's funny. I brought up something the other day to my friend who's uh shout out to Ivan Alex out in Las Vegas. We talked about something super interesting. I brought up the point that society, right? Normal people, they look at like drug addicts or alcoholics or people that have these, you know, addictions and they point the finger and they're like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Ah, and they have they, this stigma, right? But nobody points. And we're going to, this is a segue into what, what the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. No one says that about people who overeat. No one says that about people who eat like monsters. It's the other way around. A fat dude shows up. Uh, you already know, abuela. Mm -hmm. Abuela, fucking her grandson shows up to the crib. Shoving, oh, food, shoving food down his throat. Down his throat. Parties, these massive amounts of food, especially in our culture, right? Mm -hmm. Like the the mm -hmm. amount of fried and like greasy food that we eat is nuts. Mm -hmm. And at no point does anybody. It's okay if you eat. It's cool, you know. Just yeah. keep eating. Kill yourself. Yeah, you know? I mean, both of those things are an escape from something, right? A hundred percent. Whether you do drugs to escape from your life, or drink to escape from a problem, you eat a bunch of sugar, or yeah. eat to cope with something that you're dealing with. It's all. Food is an addiction as much as... 100%. Yeah. Um, I heard that there was this study done that I believe they used rats and they put cocaine in a dish and sugar in another one and the rats kept going to the sugar. <laughs> like sugar can actually be more, more addictive, addictive than, cocaine. than coke. So That's wild. it's, I mean, it yeah, hand in hand. Like if you can't deal with your problems and you need that escape, people find it either in drugs or in food. Mm. It's the same thing and both will kill you eventually i saw this clip and i I, sh I was gonna send it to you this guy i follow named myron golden he's bro his content is really good he kind of takes um but the way he does it, it, it i like it because I, I think i've told you my thing is wisdom like i just learn I, just, I like ancient teachings from anywhere it doesn't i don't care if it's the bible ancient greece or wherever mm -hmm. and but his thing is the bible but he's not a preacher he just kind of takes practicals and turns it into like a practical lesson yeah. right and he talks about food and then he talks about Sodom and Gomorrah and like gluttony and all this stuff. And it's like, man, he basically said that food is has been the number one weapon against humanity in the it, like f since the inception of the first human. Yeah, I mean, and that's true, too, because think about a drug addict trying to <sighs> come off drugs or an alcoholic or a smoker trying to 100%. quit. The first thing they go to is eat to eat like even smoke. Like you want to quit smoking cigarettes. Let's say that's the least worst thing you can do. Mm hmm. They're, they're like eating candy all day now because they're trying to curb these nicotine cravings yep. or whatever. So now you're just like replacing nicotine with sugar. With sugar, yeah. So, yeah, I believe that. I mean, food can kill you as much as it can give you life. 100%. Depending on what you're consuming, obviously. So I would assume your fascination with health and like anatomy came from obviously your audio, your autoimmune yeah. issues that you've had. Yeah, so okay. I started getting really into health and nutrition um, because I developed autoimmune disease or disorder, whatever you want to call it, like three years ago. Mm. Um, Recently? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a recent thing. I was always healthy for the most part. Um, 
you know, like as a teenager, I smoked cigarettes, I drank and I ate like shit. Mm. But as I got older, I started getting healthier. Um, and autoimmune, most of the time, from my understanding, stems from trauma or stress. And I was in a really abusive relationship like three years ago, like in 2020 to 2022, around there, around like COVID. The pandemic. Thing. Yeah. So, I mean, we were meeting the worst people at that time. <laughs> like, we didn't, like, it was just a shit time for everybody. And but, the worst came out of everybody. Yeah, think, exactly. Yeah. But because of that relationship, I slowly started to get sick and I was developing like weird ass symptoms that I've never experienced. I was getting allergies to things that I've never been allergic to anything like, mm. you know, um, and then eventually it got to a point where my mom had to live with me for like two months because I couldn't go to the bathroom. Like I couldn't walk to the bathroom without like passing out. Wow. Like I had no control of my body anymore. It felt like really weird. Um, I thought it was spiritual. So, you know, I went that route first. Then I went the medical route. They didn't know what the fuck was wrong with me because my labs were coming up fine. Normal. Like they were like, there's nothing wrong with you. You're anxious. You have <laughs> you have heartburn. So take a Pepsid, um, whatever. And it wasn't until I saw a functional doctor and he looked at my labs and he was like, you have severe inflammation everywhere. This is an autoimmune disorder. I never tested specifically for which one I have because... It doesn't matter to me. The treatment is the same. The same for all. And it's all, the yeah. diet. So he changed my diet and I've been healthy pretty much ever since. But yeah, that so three years ago, I really started looking into, you know, supplementation, especially anti-inflammatory stuff mm. and anti-inflammatory diet, mostly animal based um, carnivore on and off, depending on how I'm feeling. But yeah, I kind of became obsessed. It's like to the point where literally today my cousin sent me her labs this morning. Cousin, mm. look at my labs. What do I do? Now I'm like, That's wild. everyone in my family sends me their lab work. All my friends, what do I do? I'm like, okay, you need to increase this, decrease this, take okay, this out. Okay, Andrea added. Huberman. I, Jesus. I know. And, uh, <laughs> Andrea. <laughs> Andrea Huberman. And it's fucked up. And I, I feel weird about it because I'm don't. like, guys, I'm That's not awesome. qualified to do this. Well, look. Here's here's something I'll tell you that I don't like about society. They like to be like, oh, did you go to school for that? Fuck school, bro. Yeah. School? Are you serious? As broken and as... Listen, bro. If you're a person who still doesn't take advice... It's just scary advice, when you're dealing with people's labs and their health. I get it's it. A little I, different. I, I get it. But if you're... If you're if you're of the of the mind or of the mindset still that if someone didn't go to school for something, oh no, I shouldn't be taking their advice. You're retarded. Because the most <laughs> practical fucking place you're gonna get experience is in the real world, not in some college. Yeah. Half of the professors that teach you never even did this thing or whatever they're teaching you in the real world. That's why I will refuse to get a business degree from a college. Refuse. Yeah. yeah. Most of you oh, I have an MBA. Yeah, you learn from some asshole who's been a professor for 20 years at where? You know what I mean? Like yeah, real world experience is definitely 100%. where it's at. Yeah. 150%. My dad actually um, has had two heart surgeries. He had an aortic aneurysm a couple years ago. He recently repaired his carotid artery and whatever. He's always had high blood pressure and like issues. His diet has not been great. Mm. Um, and recently I have, I looked at his labs. I changed up a few things and, and he calls me the other day and he's like, it worked too well. Vanessa, this worked too well. My <laughs> blood pressure is too low now. Like, I, should I go to the emergency room? And I'm like, no, chill. Like, do you feel like you're sick? Like, do you feel no, like passing feel out? Great. He's yeah. like, no, I feel fine. But it's it, the numbers are low. What do I do? I got to remove this supplement. I have to stop eating this or start. And I'm like, no, dude, you have to remove the blood pressure medication. Mm. And he's like, what? And it like <clears throat> blew his mind because my dad's always paid attention to his Western doctors. Right, like right, He's right. always done what they tell him. They tell him to take this. He's taking it. So he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, remove the pill a few days and just see what happens. You're not going to die. Exactly. Like, just do it. And he did it. And like, Blood pressure was normal. Normal. And he's never had normal blood pressure without being on medication. And all I did was, you know. Change his diet. 